Don't you hate when you buy something and then like a month later, it's like half off? Well, here we are with Daz Studio Face Transfer Unlimited. Uh, usually goes for about $50. As of this recording, which is uh, Elite Day 2020, it is in the Daz store for $30. So there's that. Anyways, why I started this video is that Everyone seems to have their own face scanning technology for 3D applications and games. Daz Studio has one, Blender has a few in the works or have some out already. Uh, iClone has theirs, they just, I think it's called Headshot or something like that. So, we're going to do a short tutorial on using the Daz Studio Face Transfer Unlimited. There is a free version that comes with Daz Studio for free. I believe you can only save three faces and I believe they have watermarks on them. So it's pretty much a test and proof of concept. Um, uh, today I'm working with the unlimited version that you see here. It, and the gist of it is you can take a picture of anyone yourself, friends or family, people, pictures off the internet, and you take a face shot of that person and you can make it into a Genesis 8 character. So the I think the key thing here is taking a good photo. Um, one, some of the things I have troubles with is the eyes and the mouth. I would advise that you always take a photo just like a driver's license photo or a passport type photo. Not that you had to take those photos, but a photo like that with your phone or whatnot. Well lit, as you see here in the, um, you know, the, the shopping page. Well lit, uh, close to the face. Don't want something far, far away. Um, I'd also advise that you don't have a photo that is chopped off anywhere in the head. Let me show you, for example. Here's some photos I took of myself. This is the one I'm using for our example here today. Here's one that was closer to it. I chopped off the top of my head in the, in the photo and uh, the plugin failed. So you don't want that. Um, everybody's eyes are different. If you watch movies and things like that, you notice that everybody's eyes aren't symmetrical. Um, so that might give you an issue. So what happens sometimes when I did it was that the my eyes, the picture of my eyes actually got came part of the texture of the face around it. So the eye object was smaller. It's kind of hard to explain without going through it. But the eye object was smaller than the socket and part of the, my eye got was kind of um, painting onto the nose of the character. That's the best way to explain it right now. So in my photo that I actually took, I took a couple of my eyes wider open thinking that would fix the issue, but it did not. So I took one where my eyes were slightly squinted. The other thing is that I would advise that you don't smile in the picture because the creases in your face will become part of the character even when they're not smiling or making a particular face. So, you know, just a plain face, no emotions, uh, not smiling, and also the mouth. I don't know why they have this character, this person with the mouth open because what will happen is that the teeth will become kind of painted onto the lips and you don't want that either so I would advise when you take your photo have your mouth closed and so that your lips will be your lips and your teeth won't be painted onto your lips anyways uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, what you would do I'm using Daz Studio 4.12 and if you buy the unlimited version, you would you know, download it through the Daz Install Manager and install it and reopen or refresh your Daz Studio. You go to Window, Panes, and click on Face Transfer. Oh, free or, or paid, and do the same thing th at that point. You would then select your source image. You browse to where your pictures are. And I'm choosing this one. It accepts JPEG and PNG files. Open. Don't worry about the orientation that it shows your picture in. Most times it will figure it out. 
Um, some things to also note is that uh, you might see some odd things when you have facial hair involved. It's not going to be an actual 3D object of facial hair, it's painted onto the face of the character. So if you have long hair, you might need to find a beard add-on or facial hair add-on. Also, I would advise you that if you have longer hair, like bangs or anything, make sure your face is clear of, of your hair. Don't have your hair pink hanging in front of your face like your eyes or something. Otherwise, it would just appear like a blob going down your face or a scar or a burn or something like that. So make sure your hair is pulled back when you take these pictures. Anyways, you would go, then go and choose the gender of your character. So I'm clicking on male and then you click generate. That will take a few moments to generate a Genesis 8 character with your face applied. And uh, <clears throat> if you have characters already in your scene, it's not going to overwrite your character. It's going to create a new character. So that's why I started with a blank scene. Is it done yet? Yes, it is. It takes a few moments, uh, and then it takes you to the next tab where you have an option to save. You don't have to save it to manipulate your character, but if you want to use it again in the future, you can. So I'm going to hit save, and these are the options. These are the full options, because you can just simply call it, give it a name and it'll save it. But full options, I'm going to call it, for future reference, face um, tutorial. Daz, I don't know, something like that. This is where it will save the texture file. So if you want to touch up your textures after you import them, something's wrong, you got a blot somewhere, imperfections, you can, if you're proficient with Photoshop or something like that, you can go and touch it up. And this is your, again, your what you call your file, where you put down here, it comes right here for the shape. Because you're creating a texture set, you're creating a shape. It will try to shape the head closer to the head in the photo. Uh, let's see, the path to it. So in the shaping path, this is where it will the slider will, or the morph will show up. And I'll also save everything as a subset. So you want to quickly deploy your character again. It will be as a scene subset, and this will be the name of it, or the path to it, and then a name. Let's see, let's go ahead and hit accept. And then let's go ahead and examine our character. After this, we don't really need this tab anymore, so we can X out of it, or you can make it part of your, you know, your layout. Uh, for male and female, it will give you a basic set of, you know, basic clothing. So that's, this happens all the time with the black trunks and black uh, shirt. We see from my particular character, let's see, you know, I kind of had a full beard going all the way around my face. You can see here, it, because I only saw the front of my face, it doesn't scan your whole head, so it's just the front. Uh, my beard kind of stopped here. It kind of just guesses where you would have stubble for the rest of your face, wrong, along your face and on your head. So from this particular instance, I'm going to add a beard that I've bought from Daz Studio. So that's a consideration you need to make if you're dealing with facial hair, whether you're going, you know, need a clean shaven face and then add facial hair or, you know, just stick with a goatee or something like that. I don't know. You know, do you need to shave beforehand? I don't know. Sometimes you have is issues with the nostrils being misplaced in this particular case that uh, my nostrils turned out fine. Lips look a little off, I guess, I don't know. And then with the eyes, this is what I was talking about earlier with the eyes. You can see the eye object is clearly kind of outlined in black here. It was, that's the actual 3D eye. My eyes got kind of painted onto the area around the eyes. So if I were to, let's see if I can quickly find the eye object and make it disappear. Cause if I highlight it, it's just gonna turn the yellow. Lower abdomen, go up to the chest, go to the upper chest, then to the neck, I believe. Head, uh, let's see. 
turn off visibility for the eye. So I turn off the eye and you can still see part the edges of my eyes showing up as part of the skin. So um, that's something you need to play with with the picture and the angle of the picture you take it at. Kind of need to be as straight on as possible, not at an angle. You can of course change your eyes out if you had other eye materials. So say you had a character with eyes. Uh, quickly here. Very quickly going to eye array. So I want to give myself green eyes. Mm. Yeah, green. And there, I have green eyes now. So you can swap things out like you normally do. And let's go to shaping and I'll show you what I was talking about earlier. So let's say I go to actor, you need to go to the head. And then you go to face transfer. And there is the slider for this particular morph. So if I turn it back to zero, it has the same texture, but it goes back towards the more general Genesis 8 default shape. So you're free to mix and match. If you have other morphs you want to apply or try to get it closer to that, your actual um, shape, you can go ahead and play with that. But that's where this morph resides. So uh, that's the gist of it. I'm actually going to delete this character because I had one that looks better and I saved it earlier. So if you go out of people and you go to your library in your scene subsets, you go to face transfer. This is where all the characters you saved reside. So if I click on this set, it should load my previous character that I did a while ago. I think so. it looks a little bit better than what we got today. It was just a different picture. It's a little bit lighter in tone, probably because I had a different set of lights when I took the picture. But what I like about it more, I didn't have a full beard then, so I didn't have a beard to cut off. I just had a goatee at the time. And um, the eyes don't have that problem that I was mentioning earlier, so... I guess a better way to show it was would be to close the eyes and you would see what I was talking about. The eyes would still be kind of open and closed. So anyways, uh, I, from here, I would just add hair to look like my own hair and uh, maybe a beard. If, if you have them, you also had to go out and buy them. So without going through all the rendering, here is a picture that I rendered of that same character. And with uh, a beard added and hair that I also purchased from Dad's studio. So that's about it. That is the basics of the face transfer add-on. Uh, maybe not as robust, robust as other um, three face scanning applications and other programs, but it is a pretty good start and it's better than trying to model a person yourself. Um, is leaps and bounds from that. So, um, you know, especially this weekend when it's only $30, I would say go ahead and grab it and give it a shot. I don't know how long this sale is going on. Um, I'm not here to promote it, promote the sale either. I just happen to go to the page to show you and it's, you know, 41% off, which I wish I had got it at 41% off. Anyways, subscribe for more tutorials like this. Thank you for watching and have a blessed day.